Hey guys, we are back at Starlight Drive-In, and today we are building some operator-controlled structures to close off the backside of the settlement. Now, today's video is pretty long, so to shorten it up, I made a separate video with just the tour. If you're interested in seeing the tour, there's a link in the description that'll take you right to it. Now you can see there's a lot of uh, scrappy structures, and I had a ton of fun putting this one together, and I'm really excited to share it with you. So let's get started, shall we? So we're going to start things off by building a barricade out of cars that's going to close off this, you know, collapsed section of the existing structure. And the idea is to just get the vehicles as close as possible to the structure without clipping too much. That looks pretty good. Now it's not that large of an area, so just a few vehicles will work. And again, we just want to follow the contours of the structure here. So you can see I'm kind of tucking this car in at an angle so it matches the angle of that uh, support there. And we just want to keep it from clipping. And anywhere where it does clip, we're going to go ahead and use sandbags to cover that up. Now for the top of the barricade, we're going to use one of these flat cars, and we can use that as a guard platform, and it has a nice built-in turret stand as well. But anytime you are stacking cars, you inevitably get a lot of clipping. And a little bit of clipping is okay, you know, the metal kind of bends around each other, so it makes sense that there would be some clipping, but obviously that's way too much. So we're going to go have to move that. Now look how long it takes me to open my build menu here. And that's sped up 250 times. But I think what we can do is use the roofs of those two cars as supports and get it right in place. Nice. With the cars stacked up nicely, we can go ahead and start working on some of the other structures. And we're going to go into a mod called Box Houses. And it's a really great mod, by the way. Um, it allows you to build... Um, boxcars as well as shipping containers and I'll go ahead and link all the mods I use in a Google Doc in the description in case you're interested in checking any of those out and it all just snaps together just like vanilla pieces would and now that we got the size right we can go ahead and get the final placement of this correct and I'm going to use select all and just sink it down a little bit just to get rid of some of that floor makes it look a little bit more junky as well and I think that looks good yeah Nice. And so once we have the container placed where we want it, we can start replacing some of the container pieces with actual wood bits or metal bits, just so it looks a little bit more scavenged. Now with this half wall, it has those two little wood bits that stick out the top, and we're going to go ahead and overlap that with the metal of the container, just so it looks a little more um, scavenged. Now the interior space of the container is a little limited, so I'm going to use one of these shack wall and roof combos just to extend out the uh, build area on the inside of the structure. We're going to go ahead and use some of these window boards just to cover up the gap between the wood wall there and the roof. The wood walls are a little bit shorter than the container walls. Now for the other side of that gap, we're going to go ahead and use one of these window boards that's made with corrugated steel just to vary the texture. Now as I was doing that, I noticed there was a gap in between the shack wall and roof combo and the shipping container, so we can use place everywhere to just inch it closer, just so it's making contact with the container. That looks pretty good. And so now we're going to go ahead and build some railings that go around the top of this structure, just to provide a little bit of support so nobody falls off. And I'm going to use one of these half walls instead of an actual railing, just so it'll extend down and kind of be part of the wall, and just add to the scavenged look. Now we can also go ahead and add some of these window boards there. Again, change up the texture a little bit and make it look kind of a, like a half-formed wall or half-formed railing at least. Nice. Now for the backside railing, we're going to go ahead and use one of these shack columns as well as some chain link fence. Change up the texture a little bit. Um, you know, the more different materials you can add in one structure, 
the more uh, improvised it tends to look. It's just a matter of glitching the chain link fence into the pillar there, as well as the raider pole. Now I thought it looked a little bit odd to have the chain link fence, uh, you know, vertical support rod there visible. So I want to go ahead and glitch that into the wooden pillar. So we just have to raise it up enough so that it completely covers it up. But then of course that leaves a gap, you know, on the ground level. So we can just take another one of these pillars and just bury it underneath just so it looks like one solid pillar. And that alleviates seeing any of the um, pole that's holding up the chain link fence. Just a matter of lining it up correctly. Now I don't get it perfect here, but I get it pretty close. Seeing that this was a drive-in, we have plenty of vehicles to choose from. So we're going to go ahead and build another home here, but this time we're going to use one of these cars. And I'm going to build something similar to the scavenger home I built in a previous video. Now to close off this back side of the car, we're going to go ahead and use one of these auto frames. And we're just going to use place everywhere to rotate it until we get it at the right angle. And I think it looks really junky. And again, there's a lot of vehicles here, so they would have access to frames and different cars. Just a matter of getting it close, but not too close that it's clipping. Nice. Now this is the same technique that I used in my Hangman's Alley build when I built a little barrier there. And we just flip the frame on its side, and then we take some wood bits and just kind of place them into the frame just so that the different materials overlap and it forms a, you know, complete wall. Now, as you can see, I left a big gap in the middle there, and so we can go into Thematic and Practical and grab one of the half walls they have there. It just adds a little bit of a different look to it. And then to finish it off, we can go ahead and use some of these window boards just to close off that tiny little gap there. I'm having a hell of a time getting that into place. I do eventually get it. And then I just use Place Everywhere to inch it down so it's not clipping through the solid steel. Now because we're building on the hill, that vehicle is kind of floating there, so we're going to need a way to get into it, and we're going to use one of those flat cars again, and just kind of build a little bit of a ramp. We can actually move the trees around, but I don't want to move them too much. So the basic idea here is that this car is going to act as some support for the top vehicle, as well as a walkway to get inside of it. Now, the bottom vehicle is a bit of a natural ramp, but we're going to go ahead and ease that incline a little bit by adding some of these curved ply boards. And you can see it's just a little bit too big, so we can use place everywhere and just shrink it down to size, and then just glitch it into place. Nice. Now the original plan was to use another one of those curved ply boards, but that was just a little bit boring. So now we're going to take one of these regular ply boards and we're just going to use place everywhere to tilt it and make a little ramp so you can get on top of the vehicle. Just takes a little bit of maneuvering here. Then we just want to lower it in and it's important it doesn't clip too much because that's going to be really noticeable. We just need it to barely touch. Yeah, I think that's good. With the boards in place, we can go ahead and take some of these sandbags and just use them to act as support for this uh, bottom board here. And we just want to get a few of them randomly buried in. And then we want to get some others towards the back so they can actually support this board. And we just want to keep filling it in just until it looks right. It's really easy when the vehicle is actually sitting on the ground for this because you can just sink them down. And now the single sandbags work really good to fill in any extra gaps. You just want to make sure you use place everywhere to go ahead and turn the object physics off. Otherwise, um, they'll move around if you bump them. Or they'll just altogether fall right through different objects like vehicles. So you just want to get the angle right and then just move it in to cover up the gap. 
And for the finishing touch, we're going to go ahead and add another ply board here underneath this curved ply board, just so it's actually making contact with something and it's not floating. So before we get too far, let's go ahead and build a wall to attach this structure to the car barricade. And we're just going to use one of these shack columns here. And we're just going to use place everywhere to increase the size and attach it to the structure. So I opted to build a wall rather than just use um, an asset added by a mod or any of the vanilla walls here. Just so we can give it a little bit more junky character. And using the pillar, we can then attach some of these chain link fences together. It does a couple of things. One, it just makes it look a little bit more thrown together. And then it also will allow anyone on the inside to actually see through the wall if there's any enemies coming over the hill. So to do this, we just want to line it up and then get the, I guess, the, what are those, eyelets on the sides of the chain link fence. And we're just going to bury those into the wood columns. And I'm just trying to get the height right and the spacing in between the columns correct. Just a little bit of maneuvering. With the chain link fence in place, we can go ahead and fill in the bottom with one of these walls from Thematic and Practical. You can see there it's not quite wide enough, so we can just increase the size and then go ahead and slot it into place. And now we're back to the window boards just to fill in the little gaps in between the chain link fence and the wood wall there. Nice. For the next section of wall, we're going to do something slightly different and we're just going to have a little bit of chain link as opposed to, you know, most of it being chain link. And I also want the vertical support for the chain link to be completely visible. And so in order to do that, we have to angle the fence there slightly and then just maneuver the rest of the bits just so we can hide those eyelets, but still keep that pole visible. So that's what I'm doing here. Just moving some of the wood, wood around basically. That looks pretty good. Oh, there we go. And now we're going to build a small guard post. And we're going to use one of these shack bridges just so that the guards have a way to get up to their station. We're just going to place it right up against the car. We don't want it to clip too much. And now to build the platform that the guards can actually stand on, we're going to use these quarter boards. And they fit in perfectly right in between those two fins. You do have to adjust the angle slightly, but they will fit in nicely. And it's okay if the bottom of the board clips with the car. You're not going to see that anyway. We're going to cover it up with some ply boards. And we're going to throw some sandbags in there as well for a little support. And, you know, it just kind of adds to the junky feel to the place. Now I'm going to add a second quarter board here. And we're going to glitch it into the other one just to extend out that platform just a little bit. So there's a little bit more space for the guard to move around. And again, it's okay if it clips with the vehicle a bit. And now we're going to add some ply boards there just to cover up some of the clipping. It also changes up the texture and a little pop of color never hurts. Time for the sandbags. So we take the sandbag walls and fill in the major gaps. And then the individual sandbags can fill in the smaller gaps. Now you can see here, I forget to turn object physics off and it drops right through the vehicle. But basically you just want to place these in there to fill in any of the holes left by the larger sandbag walls. And then I just take the sandbags and rotate them around just to get them so they're not all looking exactly the same. And you just slot them into place. And you want it to look pretty stuffed because these sandbags are supporting the weight of the wood and the guard. Another great thing about using this vehicle as a guard station is the driver area is perfect for turrets. So we're going to go ahead and place a spotlight down. And then we're going to use one of these wall paneled solar panels to power it. Now in retrospect, I suggest using the one that sits on the ground and you'll see why in a second. We're going to shrink this down as much as possible and then we're going to go ahead and bury it inside the turret here. But since I'm using the one that snaps to the wall, it keeps wanting to snap to something. So I just have to move it around until I get it to go underneath the turret here. Having a hell of a time. There we go. And of course, it's sandbag time. And just like before, we're going to take the sandbag wall 
and fill out the majority of the space, and then we're going to fine tune it with the individual sandbags. Now it's okay if the sandbags clip through the bottom of the vehicle. We're actually going to fill in with smaller sandbags underneath the vehicle anyway, just so it looks a little bit more supported. The main idea is, is we don't want the sandbags to clip with the motor on the turret, just, you know, for realism. So you can see I'm just angling it so it covers up most of the leg, but stays out of the motor. And now we need to add a little bit of protection for the guard, just so he's not a sitting duck up here. We're gonna put one of these metal barriers up and we want to leave enough room in between it and the edge so we can have some, you know, of course, sandbags in front of it. And now we're going to add one of these railings from Thematic and Practical just to kind of change up the texture a bit. And the idea here is that we want them to clip together just so it looks like the railing was built around the barrier. And of course, now we're adding sandbags. And this time I used pretty much just individual sandbags. And right here, we're just gonna cover up the legs of the barrier. And that looks pretty good. Back to the other vehicle. We're gonna go ahead and place one of these junk walls underneath the rear, just to act as some support. It was actually floating above the ground. It just didn't look right. And now we can extend that wall using the same technique we used earlier to build those walls to enclose the rest of this car off. We're just gonna take one of the shack columns and just glitch it into that um, bottom wall there. And that looks pretty good. Now, because this is gonna be a much shorter wall, we can just use one of these railings from Thematic and Practical, but the technique is gonna be the same as before. We just wanna glitch it into place. And now we have a pillar on the other side and it's not quite long enough. So if we just increase the size of the railing it should make contact with both pillars. However, this pillar is not quite tall enough, so we just have to raise it up, which shouldn't be too difficult, and then just move it on over. We're gonna have to adjust that wall there. We wanna make sure that they look like they're all one piece. Nice. Back to the trusty window boards. I really love these things. And we're just going to use that to close off part of this wall here. And for the other side, of course, we're going to use some more chain link. Same as before, we just want to bury the eyelets into the wood pillar there. Nice. Now this front wall is going to have the exact same construction, only this time we're going to use the wood pillars with a metal shack wall, just to change things up a little bit. Plus the metal will probably be a little bit better support for that vehicle although it's, it is not taking the full weight. And now we're gonna add a little bit more chain link. Now, if you've ever built at Starlight, you know the other side of the settlement has chain link that runs along most of it. And so I don't think it's much of a stretch to believe that you know the Raiders here would have access to all the chain link they could possibly want. So we wanna make sure that it's close to the car but not clipping with it too much. And then we just raise up the pillars to cover up the sides. Now we're gonna add another shipping container. This would also be a building material that would be fairly abundant around this area. With all the trucks driving down the road, it would be pretty easy to grab more containers and bring them back here. And again, I wanna sink it into the ground just to make it look a little bit more thrown together. After the container was in place, I realized it wasn't at the right angle. So we're gonna go ahead and raise this uh, wood pillar here and then change the angle on the roof just so it's supported on that corner by the pillar. We just want to lower it down, but we don't want it to clip through the top. That looks pretty good. Now for this wall of the container, we're gonna do something a little different and use one of these overturned trucks and they just use place everywhere to flip it on its side. Now we're gonna take one of the junk walls from the Homemaker mod and we're gonna use that as an outer wall for the shack we're gonna build on top of the container. We just wanna make sure that it doesn't clip through at all. Nice. Now in order to build the shack up here, I had to get the roof in place and then adjust the height so that the wall doesn't clip through the container at all. Now since we have the junk wall acting as part of this outer wall, we're going to take these smaller shack walls and just glitch them together using place everywhere. You can just inch it along just so we have a nice gap there for some chain link. 
Now we're going to go ahead and add that chain link in here and give this guy a nice window out to the hill. And it's just a matter of glitching them together. That looks pretty good. But we're going to need a way to get over to this shack. So we're going to use one of these shack bridges and just place it on top of the vehicle and keep it from clipping through the roof too much. And now we have a platform so we can place one of these curved ply boards and we just want to get it so it's not clipping through the roof of the vehicle too much but it's making contact with the container. Nice. And now that shack bridge is going to need a little bit of support so these cinder blocks should work really well and we just want to get them so they're making contact with the shack bridge and it's perfectly fine if it clips through the hood of the car. Just a couple more shack bridges to get over to the other container there and our walkway should be complete. Now it's just a matter of glitching this shack bridge into the existing one and it's not quite long enough so we'll just glitch a second shack bridge just to cross that gap. Nice. One more cinder block support and we should be ready to move on to the next structure. Just have to shrink it down using place everywhere just so it's not clipping through and that looks pretty good. So I want to use a shipping container to close off this gap in between the operator farm and the workshop shack here. And so we're just going to place down one of the bottoms for the shipping container and sink it into the ground a little bit. Now the shipping container wasn't quite big enough to fill in this entire gap. So we're going to go ahead and use some wood bits just to extend it out. And you can see that shack doorway wasn't making contact with the ground. So we can just use place everywhere to drop it down a bit. And now for the roof, we're going to go ahead and snap two of those together, but you can see it's definitely too wide. So we can use place everywhere to just inch it back in place. And then we want to make sure that it's even with the doorway. So we just keep moving it over, double check. That looks about right. And now we just have to slide it back so it's flush with the other roof. Nice. And now we have to cover the gap in between the roof and the doorway. So we can just use one of these balcony railings there. And we just want to get it so it's making contact with both the roof and the doorway. And to just break up the wall there of the shipping container, we're going to put another railing on the bottom. Now for the floor of the shipping container, we're going to use the same technique as we used on the roof. But this time we're going to use a shack floor. And it's just going to give it a little bit more of a junky feel. Now for the back wall, as well as the exit, we're going to use some corrugated steel. Now adding another material to this build will really kind of enhance the junky feel, at least of this structure. It's just a matter of lining up the wall with the existing walls. And then for the exit, we're going to go ahead and use one of these ripped apart corrugated steel walls from the warehouse tab. And it just makes it look extra junky. You just have to line up the seams just to get it to look right. For the final structure in today's build, we're going to go ahead and grab one of these wooden roofs and it just snaps right to the shipping container. And then we can just use place everywhere to inch it back over to the correct side of the wall. Now, even after moving it, I still had to move it over some more. It was still clipping with the truck there. Maybe just a little bit more so it's not going all the way through the truck. That should work. And once you get the first roof in place, the other ones just snap right to it. And then we can just add some support here with one of those wooden pillars. And for the final wall, we'll go ahead and use one of those makeshift walls we've been building all day with the steel here. And then we'll use some of the wooden pillars to act as supports. And the idea is we just don't want it to clip with this truck too much. So we're going to have to adjust things a little bit. And in pulling that out some, I have to adjust the roof just so that the wood support there isn't clipping through at all. Nice. And in order to make a makeshift doorway, we need to extend this wall out a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and take one of these half walls from the homemaker tab. And we just want to glitch that into the pillar. Have, have it most of the way glitched in with one or two boards sticking out just so it looks like it's been nailed together. Nice. Now we're going to build a small storage area and we're going to take some quarter boards and place them on the hood of this truck. And we don't want them to clip through the truck too much. And we also want to make sure we get the angle right so we can snap some boards to it and they'll run along the wall straight. Looks pretty good. 
with all the floorboards snapped into place, we can just use place everywhere to inch them back on the correct side of the wall. And then we can add some support and we're just going to take some of these shack columns there and same as before, we just want them making contact with the boards but not clipping through. And now we need to build a way to get up there. So we'll use one of these shack bridges and we'll just want to angle this in so that it's making contact but not glitching through. Nice. And now we need to add a couple more shack bridges so we can get from roof to roof. And we just want to place this down. We want to get it so it's making contact with the roof. And it's okay if it glitches through the wood a little bit. You're not even going to notice it once it's in place. Now the bridge wasn't quite long enough. So we're just going to glitch two of them together, just like before. And we want them to match up and make contact with the roof. So now we're going to need a step to get onto the roof. And these cinder blocks should work just like the pallets in my Hangman's Alley build and function as one step. And now just to add a ply board there, just to change up the color a little bit. And we'll just shrink it down and place it on top. Nice. And now for the railings on top of this shack here, we're going to go ahead and use some wire fence just to change it up a little bit. And we want to keep it from clipping through the roof, but we do want that wood post to overlap the roof there a little bit just so it looks attached. Now for the final bit of railing, we're going to go back to the thematic and practical tab and use one of the railings they have in there just to make it look even more random on this shack. Just a matter of lining it up with the roof. Nice. If you want to see the full tour of this build, there is a link down in the description that will take you right to it. And if you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and leave a like. Drop me a comment down below if you have any thoughts about this build or any of my other builds. Subscribe if you want to see when my next video goes live. Should be back here at Starlight, although I do have a few ideas for a Covenant build and a very short revisit of my Murkwater construction site. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and until then, enjoy your time in the Commonwealth.